For upcoming projects I need quite a few inductors and since winding copper wire is a rather boring activity, I decided to automate the process. The machine following that idea is based on a Trongsi Crux 1 3D printer. Only a few 3D printed parts, some screws and threaded rods as well as an additional stepper motor are required. Since the movements for winding the copper wire can be transmitted via G-code, very little programming work was required. The 3D printer can be converted from printer to winding machine or vice versa at any time. Only the glass plate on the print bed has to be removed... A guide for the wire has to be screwed to the X-axis... ...and a stepper motor has to be clamped on the print bed. I soldered a socket to the stepper motor so that only the plug from the extruder motor has to be pulled out... ...and plugged into the new socket. It should be noted that this process must be carried out with the printer switched off, otherwise the stepper motor driver on the main board can be destroyed. The conversion is now complete and inductors can be wound. The large coil of copper wire is placed on a holder that is also composed of 3D printed parts. There is an adjustable brake on the drum to prevent the spool from moving due to inertia whenever the wire speed is slowed down. With the brake activated, the wire tension is granted throughout the winding process. The copper wire is guided by a total of 4 breast tubes which can be fixed in different positions on the mounting grid. With that, the tube positions can be adapted to different wire diameters. The attachment of the wire guide is not perfect because I originally intended to use a different printer for the project. However, the firmware of this device is rather bad and not open source either, which is why I could not make it work. Another reason not to buy devices running closed source firmware. After the wire is fed in correctly, it must be attached to the spool. There is a 3mm threaded rod on the additional stepper motor onto which the inductor core is placed and afterwards fixed by a screw. Now the winding process can be started. I wrote a small python script that generates the needed move commands in G-code format. Using G-code is an advantage as it means that no changes need to be made to the printer's firmware. The Tronxy runs fine with the standard firmware. G-code is also why I use the extruder motor to wind the wire. The motors of the 3-axis can only be moved within a limited range, while the extruder motor can rotate almost endlessly without any firmware limitations.
Some parameters in the script must be adjusted for each type of inductor. The script can either send the G-code commands to the printer via USB interface or generate a corresponding file which is then stored on a microSD card. With a store to file procedure the printing process can be started as usual. After all access have been homed... The set axis moves the wire guide to the lower edge of the inductor core. Then the Y axis moves the stepper motor with the inductor core as close as possible to the wire guide. While that happens, the wire should be held under tension by manually operating the copper wire drum. Now the winding process begins. The spindle accelerates slowly to full speed to prevent the wire from breaking. I am using a rather thin wire with a diameter of just 0.1mm. As the wire is wound, the guide on the Z-axis slowly moves up and down. The winding of the coil is not 100% smooth. On the one hand, the wire guide is not perfect and on the other hand you can see the spindle wobble on the shaft of the stepper motor. Well, perfect simply doesn't exist, but the result is more than sufficient for my purposes. What is of interest to me is that all coils have the same number of turns and that the winding process is very fast. It takes just 150 seconds per coil. After winding is finished, the wire is fixed with a drop of hot glue. And if a spool has been wound too crookedly, the copper wire can be wound back onto the large drum manually. I will show what I need the inductors for in upcoming videos. As always, the build instructions including the 3D files and the Python script are available on my website. Have a click!
and if you want to support my open source project with an Opel or two, you will find a donate button on my pages. Many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.